What's up guys? Welcome to another live session. Today is March 27th, 2020. And we're once again having some issues with the, the stream. Uh, more importantly, the connection with OBS. I'll try to call uh, OBS support, figure out what's wrong. But today's session is going to be pre-recorded. Um, I do have some pair recommendations coming in, which is great. But today is the profit recap session. So I'll go over a few of the trades we took this week. Wins and losers. Um, just to keep it transparent. And then uh, we'll go over your pair recommendations. So this week was pretty bumpy. Um, it was ma majorly fundamentally driven. And so that's usually the case when we have a lot of news, um, especially with this pandemic going on. For example, today, Prince Charles was not the only uh, you know, member of, of Britain to get uh, coronavirus. Uh, Boris Johnson, the PM, just tested positive. And that's pretty crazy that such higher ups are getting the virus. Um, so be safe everyone and in the stream earlier when we tried to stream I did pick the winner for the free month that was Furcon So Furcon make sure you email support at forexlens.com to get your free month Also guys our one week free trial um, for our discord So if you guys didn't know this week we were giving every free member a week f of full access on our discord um, To all our signals all my chart work um, you know other chart work from different traders it was free for um, starting this week up until March 31st, and now it ends on Tuesday, which is March 31st. So make sure you join in, take advantage. All you have to do is sign up for the Discord using the link in the description of the video. Once you are there, um, just fill out a short form and you'll get an email uh, with the invite link. And once you're on Discord, either message Allison or chat room admin to give you access, and you'll get full, complete access until... Uh, March 31st which is this Tuesday and um, you won't be able to post but at least you'll be able to see the signals and the trade setups and what members are talking about so uh, with the admin stuff out of the way let's go into some of the trades we took this week and we do have some nice pair of initials coming in I will, I, I will tend to that as I go through the session so the first one was Euro USD long now this was a trade we actually took twice um, and we made pretty much a solid 200 200 uh, pip gain on this trade so uh, if you see yesterday's session we got a first entry we got our second entry here um, all it was was during the session we had a nice hammer printed we had multiple hammers printed um, off resistance it was telling me the momentum to the upside was there uh, we entered somewhere here and we got a nice gain of around around a hundred a hundred pips um, we went as high as uh, you know 1.10 900 our final target was 1.11 thousand psychological level uh, we didn't get there all the way in one movement but we did make a push down and it's looking like we're gonna push back again to the to the upside to 1.11 thousand so a nice hundred a thousand pips a hundred pips were made there and then we had a similar trade setup going along um, from here as well where we made a nice 80 pips and we were just waiting for um, we're just waiting for the next suitable entry um, to get in and we got that yesterday so pretty simple um, I, I do feel bad for whoever shorted euro USD this week it was definitely not in play now now that we look at the the daily time frame you can see the momentum that we took advantage of and let me just remove these take profits and you can see the overall you know kind of force that this rally is coming with and this was majorly fueled by uh, 3.28 million Americans filing for unemployment uh, this came out yesterday this is a record it's actually four times the previous record of claims so that's that's something so the dollar is definitely gonna be weak uh, for the time being but pretty much every currency is quote-unquote weak during a, a global recession another trade setup that we took and we're currently still in well at least I am is USD CAD short now again we took this trade twice this week um, we had a first entry and then we had a second one and you can see the signal we've plotted but our first entry was very simple I'll actually show you it so this is our four hour support right here and I actually have to, might have to go to the four hour to show you so if you, as you, if you can see right here um, this is a, a four hour support that we've drawn up and all we needed was a bearish closure on the one hour time frame to take short now if we head back to the one hour, you can see this is a, a box which I, I drew during the session to show the candle we wanted below the support. And we pretty much got a replica of that candle 20 minutes later after the session. And 
that was the entry criteria. We entered short and we made a pretty solid gain of around of around uh, 112 pips, right? That was an easy 112 pip move that happened within less than two hours, right? We're just riding the volatility, riding the momentum. And then we got the, you know, a mini retrace. And then yesterday morning during the session, I saw this candle up here, which is a nice bearish candle uh, smashing through support. And so during the session, once we smashed that support, we also had a retest back up. And I knew that if we break this miniature stalling point, uh, you can see price kind of slowed down here. If we break it with significance, we're definitely going to end short. So we had this candle during the session, and that's where it got us to enter short. And we made another quick around 50 to 60 pips, depending on your entry. Um, right around 68 pips for this trade, um, and that was solid. So uh, we are pretty much out of this trade. I am holding a small 0.20 lot runner. Uh, you know, I entered, I entered with a two lot and now have a 0.20 running in case this thing does go all the way down here. Um, you know, I'll reap the rewards and I actually adjusted my stop loss just above this resistance because uh, I knew it was going to make a deep retrace uh, this morning. But uh, that's a solid, solid trade setup. Currently up 315 um, for the week. And then this week wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. So there was a, a trade that we kind of forced because we... Uh, the week was so slow and we, we had no business taking this trade but um, you know we like to be transparent here and the trade idea is gone but basically what happened was I'll try to get to the, the exact setup it was something like this and uh, I normally don't take these type of setups uh, but during the session it looked good so during the session this one hour candle was actually all the way down here and it looked pretty good for a short to take it to this to this range. And it, and it was a 2.0 R to R setup. Um, not really giving it credit here, but uh, we, you know we we entered that trade, but we immediately got stopped out. Um, I told the traders to enter with a uh, 50% of your regular position size, so half of what you would usually enter. So you know if you usually enter a 2.0, you would enter with a 1.0 lot, um, just because for pound pairs we usually like to wait for the four hour closure. But because of this trade, it was moving so quickly, I knew that if we were to hold off on it, we might miss the mo the whole move entirely. So, uh, you know, we kind of jumped the gun and we got burnt for it. But that's what happens when you play with fire. At least we took the precaution of um, entering a 50% position. So instead of a 100 pip loss, it was only a 50 pip loss. Um, so that set us back down to around 270 for the week. But then came the trades in the beginning of the week. Um, first of all, NSD Yen, which is a fantastic long trade, very simple. Here was the long trade in question, and if we pop the four hour, uh, we had a very, very simple entry criteria. So all we needed was uh, a bullish closure above the support, and we got multiple entries. We actually entered after this bullish hammer, or at least I did. Um, we had this candle, um, but I wasn't really too sure because of the long way to the downside. We had a bearish hammer. Again, I wasn't really too sure, but this candle, you know, this confirmed me. This is also an inside bar pattern. Um, you know, one, two, three, this pattern right here. It's called an inside bar pattern. We had that, and then we had a, a, a bear, a bullish hammer printed off this resistance. And that's when we made a quick entry, and it made a really good, sizable rally. Close to around, uh, whoops, whoops. Around maybe 130 pips, which is uh, pretty fantastic for NSD. Yeah, so around 130 pips. Um, I was going to sleep, so I probably got around 60 pips, if I remember correctly. Um, but a lot of our London session members got a nice, solid move. We didn't get all the way to our target, but this is why we secure profits and move stops to entry, because you might get 130 pips out of 150 move. And if you wait for the extra 50, uh, 20 pips, you might lose on everything you gained in that trade. So um, it's better to not get greedy, to secure profits when you can, especially after significant moves. And the volatility these markets are providing is fantastic. You know, especially if you're in the initial direction, it's great. But you don't want to take you don't want to take it for granted because it could very well go against you within a heartbeat. Um, this is a fantastic trade. Another trade we took in the start of the week was Euro Aussie, and this was based off the four hour time frame because uh, of the high volatility. Volatility we like to wait for the four hour time frame for Euro Aussie. And it was a very simple trade setup. We drew this blue support zone right here. You can see a lot of wicks 
um, you know, holding up this area of price, right? You see rallies from here, you see rallies from here, you see rallies from here. And then we had, you know, a four hour bearish closure below the lowest level, our entry criteria, and we entered short. And again, taking profits is crucial, right? We got around 170 pip drop. You know, <laughs> my poor self, I got 30 pips um, because I said it uh, right before I was going to sleep, so I could only get 30 pips out of this trade. But the reason why I say take profits is there's no point of having floating profits, right? Floating profits don't equate to uh, your balance. They only equate to your equity, your floating equity. Um, the only time that floating profit matters is once you close it. So no point of, you know, like, for example, if you were up 166 pips, but you were you wanted to wait for, you know, TP, TP2 down here or whatever the case may be, you would have, you know, lost the profits you made because this thing reverted back. So with this volatility, taking profits is, is of most key and of most importance, in my opinion. So um, solid trade, you know. And then one more trade really quickly we took. Pound CHF, which was another mistake we kind of made. We kind of forced the issue. Um, but thankfully, the you know we had a few major winners at the end of the week that didn't hurt too much. And here's a trade idea. Again, try to be very, very transparent with you guys. Um, the stop loss wasn't up here. This is just because price went up here. But um, it was around a two point. Yeah, you can see right here. It was around a 1.64 intraday setup uh, short. And we had this closure during the session for our time frame very uh, in line with our rules and we entered short um, we immediately immediately got stopped up for 70 pips um, so if you just take into consideration the past two trades we're probably sitting around 330 for the for the week so um, obviously not as lucrative as, as our past few weeks you know we had a hundred pip week uh, just a week ago so but pretty solid well within our average of 300 pips per week and um, you know that's that's what we do in the trading room we got to show our wins and losses that's the only way but now the important part of the session is looking at the pair recommendations, getting ready for next week um, so we can have a solid week. So I'm going to go ahead and over to our Discord and see what people want to see. So first off, pound dollar. And I'll do pound dollar. Now, uh, this is not the actual idea. We may have to draw a new chart because the other one's pretty clouded with uh, our past levels. So I'll quickly draw it, but uh, to be honest guys, my opinion for a pound is a long. Now I'll show you some price action about pound that most people haven't figured out and it's so simple or haven't even decided to read into. And you guys could take this with, uh, with um, you know, as, as a tool in your trading. So. If you notice on pound, right, on pound pairs especially, anytime you have, like, for example, anytime you have huge wicks to the downside, so for example, you see this candle right here on the monthly time frame, this is what you call a bearish hammer, right? You have a, a very, very long wick to the bottom, uh, uh, you know, a body, and then a decent size wick to the top. This is a hammer, right? Now, let's take a look at what happens when we see these hammers for pound dollar, okay? So you can see, let's look for that same candle, let's look for the same candle. Um, so for the same candle, here's a good candle, right? You notice the key idea is that this candle is a good indication of a rally. So for example, you see this candle right here? We had a rally go up. And this is usually off support levels, right? Support. Um, so if we draw our weekly support, you can see there's a strong weekly support here, right? We had a previous rally from here, previous rally from here. So anytime we've printed a, a significant hammer like this, right? We had a nice strong rally to resistance right and you can see that in the past as well a nice hammer right here long way to the bottom um very small way to the top and then here even this support you have a few hammers and we have a huge significant rally right and you can see this in all time frames for the pound um, but it has to be off support and even a uh, support slash resistance because resistance can turn to support because you can see this resistance zone right here what did we have when we broke it? We had a hammer. We had a bullish hammer right here. We had another hammer and a rally. Okay, so these are important trade um, concepts you need to understand. The candle uh, kind of kind of chemistry, or um, you know, kind of formation, candle formation. I think that's what I'm looking for. Um, but again, you can see right here, 
hammer off this blue support and you take a long. That's a simple entry criteria. And now here we have a hammer being formed on the weekly time frame. You can see a very long wick to the, to the bottom, big body, no wick to the top. This is an indication to buy, right? And, and we would be very, very well in terms of risk to reward if we bought this setup. And so that's my opinion for a pound right now is to long this thing, especially against the dollar since the dollar is substantially weak right now, especially with unemployment. Now 2.91 R2R, it doesn't get better than that. If for some reason price does come back down near these levels, most likely than not, it's gonna go head down to make new lows. But as long as it stays above, we're looking good for longs. And that's what I think we'll have on the table um, next week. So let me just remove this idea, go to the daily time frame, see if there's a good entry. So this is a perfect entry. Again, that same hammer and pound pairs love hammers. They just love it. So this is a this is a hammer right here off support again. This would have been a nice entry if you saw it um, on the four hour. Um, but obviously on the daily, um, look at the look at the momentum one two three. And this is the fourth day of straight buys coming in after a huge sell off. So it is a it is a trend reversal for pound with the first target at one point two five five hundred. Uh, that's the target. So I'm going to send this uh, arrow up here. Now let's check the 4 hours, see if maybe there's an entry. Obviously today is Friday, so I'm talking about in perspective of Monday. Um, and there is a pretty solid entry if you ask me. So um, we're going to be taking into consideration the whole range. Obviously targets up here, so another target will be eventually 1.30 thousand. Before we touch 1.34 thousand, okay? Looking to the left, you can see the, the importance of this level. Previous support turned into resistance, and that's where we're targeting. So if we look, the four hour time frame has provided us a nice area to put our stop loss. A nice area would be somewhere below these, these wicks here. You know, you can see price, the rally has kind of stalled at this level. And that's where our stop loss will be just a bit below to, to cater to the volatility. So the stop loss would be somewhere here and like this. Okay, now the long idea, if we were to enter now, um, we'll be targeting around this, this whole range, at least minimum. So if you look, in terms of r 2 it makes sense that we gun for the most amount of profits. And here you go, 2.75 r 2 r um, can't get better than that really. And obviously for this trade setup, uh, you wanna take profits every 25 or 30 pips. And if you pop to the daily, I can give you specific levels. Looking to the left, we're just looking for pra pla places where price stalls. And uh, here's one right here. Right around uh, 1.27715. Um, and the first take profit would most definitely be um, 124, 1.24. Okay, a nice psychological level. Um, and you can see a previous wick up into this area. So 1.24000, 1.24000 000 will be the first take profit. After we get that target, we can target 1.25000 um, and then 1.255 and then continuing on. We'll get into more detail on Monday, but this is a nice idea in itself to take this long. I'll go to the four hour because it shows the, the actual um, idea itself. So. I'm gonna send this through um, so people on Discord know I analyze the trade setup. And so I'll send this through. Search. And who knows, you guys actually might like this recorded version a bit better. Um, it might seem a bit more structured to you, a bit more smoother. I mean, it is Friday, so we're technically not losing too much by not going live. But uh, I have called my, uh, you know, my service provider, and I even got bumped up to 150 Mbps. So I'm not sure what the the deal was with the internet. Um, I'll even do a speed test after to show you guys. But this is the long idea we have, and it's playing out right now. But it is Friday, so be patient. Um, I'm pretty sure on Monday we'll have just as a good as an entry. So that's done. I don't want to take too much time. So I'm quickly going to go over some major trades. EU, um, EU as uh, sweet Casper. EU is going to make another rally to 1.11 thousand. I'm going to look, look. We'll take a look at gold and oil. 
So gold, interesting trade setup, but my bias is still long. It's just gonna be a, a bit of a, of a of annoying trade to take. So I entered long here, as you can see this trade idea. And during the week, I actually entered into some major drawdown. I'm talking about 250 pips, but finally this thing popped back up and hit one of my take profits. Um, so I actually got out of gold trade just because I didn't want to hold on to this this big mess for too long. But you know, as long as we stay above the support, we're gonna be good to go for longs. Now, if we just shift this over, I just be looking for a reaction above the support. Definitely below the support, it's a good level to go long as well. Um, but anytime we crush this four hour support right here, um, Casper, we're definitely going short. And that's that's the issue with gold right now is it's it's is it can't find any momentum to continue up hopefully over the weekend where you know i can't believe i'm saying this but you know when more and more in developments with the pandemic comes on um you know the safe haven which is gold will start to dominate and this thing should shoot up uh, for its next leg up but in general i'd be waiting for the support to hold which it is right now but more important importantly this gold uh, trade idea needs to happen if we clear this previous resistance that we've created on the four hour time frame. On the four hour time frame, we've created a solid resistance at 1640. If we get a four hour closure above, you know, a candle like this will do, like a candle like this, a four hour candle right above here, right above, we're going to be good to go um, to make new highs. And uh, make a run for 1700. Now, once we get 1700 out of the way, I definitely do think that 1800 is inevitable, right? And that's that has been my target for 2020, and so that could still be a possibility. So I'll try to shift this over to give you a good idea. And the R2R would probably be have to, would probably be around 2.0. This is fine because um, I know the momentum will take this away if we get a closure like this. So I'll send this through for gold. And you can, you know, take profits at 16, you know, 1670, uh, somewhere around there. Just the midway point before, before we hit 1700. So, quickly get this plotted. 1670 would be nice. And I'll spend this out. And I'll send this through. Um, GJ, quickly uh, look at that. Since we've already looked at Euro. Okay, someone had USD CAD. Okay, two people asked for pound yen, so I'll look at pound yen really quickly. We already covered USD CAD, by the way, so we're good with that. Pound yen. So, yesterday in trading view, I gave a potential long idea, and um, obviously, you can see the alert is still active. And so, right now, this thing is looking like it could give us a good entry to go long. In the next few hours but today's friday what i mean by that is this current candle is again a hammer and when you're an uptrend pound yen loves hammers so here we go again we'll do we'll do this once again you can see after support right we've created a bunch of hammers when we broke support that was an indication we're going back up right we created a, a new higher high when we came back down below pound printed this very nice hammer to continue going up and then we got the confirmation on this hammer all right, we go to create a new higher high, and then once we get this new lower low, I mean higher low, another long hammer with a very long width to the bottom, and then we had a mini retrace, but a bunch of hammers were printed once again to go up. Now the current price action is showing a hammer printing um, right off coming uh, of the creation of a new uh, higher low. So I do think this thing is gonna squeeze up, you know, going as far as 136 next week, um, but it, it depends. It first needs to get a bearish closure on the four hour time frame above 134 uh flat and so that's my idea for pound yen it's a clear uptrend obviously a textbook uptrend with new highs and new lows but we definitely need a four hour closure and we won't jump the gun this time we're gonna wait for that four hour closure even if it eats, eats into profits at least that way we'll know um you know we're confident in our bias and we're not jumping the gun so quickly just put this here and we'll have a very nice 3.0 r2r setup like that so this is a, a probably a, a setup we could watch out for next week um, hopefully it doesn't play out on Sunday uh, that sucks but that's pound yen and I'll save this 
and actually just draw that candle just to show people what we need to enter. Okay, now I'm gonna send this through, pound in. Alright, what's next? USD cow is covered. Euro Aussie. Uh, we talked about Euro Aussie, that's great. Uh, oil. And I uh, think we will be good. We'll, be good. we'll look at Bit Bitcoin, so we'll ask for Bitcoin. Now, oil, our best friend that we haven't traded in a while, but we're so accurate at trading. Oil. Who said this? I'm so happy whoever mentioned this. Whoever mentioned oil is this. Oh, sweet Casper. You are a sweetheart. I feel like you, you mentioned this because we did have a potential trade idea on the table. Now for US oil, um, we've used this principle time and time again to short this thing. And all we wait for is a breach of four hour support. And this idea, you can see over here, we were waiting. Um, this was actually the start of the week. We were waiting for a four hour bearish closure below this horizontal array right below 21.56 per barrel of uh, a four hour closure down below here to go short. We didn't get that all week, you know, it stayed above, stayed above until this week. I mean, until today, we got that four hour closure. Obviously, um, this candle needs to be bearish for us to enter, but this would be a nice setup to take uh, on Sunday. Very nice to take it into Monday's New York Open where this thing usually dumps. So. Uh, very very nice reminder there uh, sweet Casper because uh, yeah the shorts look good I mean uh, you know the the pandemic is only getting worse I think the US finally hit a hundred K cases um, that's just that's more cases than China you can if you do the math China has I think 1.8 billion people or 1.5 um, and US has I think 350 million but now they have more cases than China, so that's just ridiculous. Anyways, um, Sunday, what I'd be looking for, Casper, is a four-hour break. A four-hour break um, just below these wicks. Okay, now that we've got that initial break below support, we have to take, we have to respect these long wicks, right? These long wicks in this area. Um, they didn't happen for no reason, right? And so what we're going to do is just going to plot a horizontal array to cover most of those wicks. And uh, this time around, we're gonna wait for a four hour bearish closure below this horizontal rate, okay? This is gonna be the second confirmation that we are headed lower. And I'll try to draw this as accurate as I can. And I'll bring this down here. And our overall target, if you guys remember, is 1717 per barrel, okay? Of crude oil and our stop loss. We can make it a bit more tighter than this. A 2.28 so we're gonna look for a four-hour bearish closure down here somewhere um, I'll put an alert at 20.5 is good crossing down and you want to enter short so phenomenal uh, phenomenal trade setup that could be on the table very very soon and I think the first take profit you can take is at 20 flat um, which is 60 pips away a nice psychological level and it's very, very, it's pretty much identical to where we wicked last time around um, when we gapped down. So 20, 20.00 20 is the first take profit. If we break that, then, you know, all, all is good. Um, we could probably t attempt maybe 18, 18, 0. Um, and then next up would be obviously 17, 17. So, we'll, so I'm going to send this through. Thank you for rec uh, reminding me about this trade. Um, we haven't really focused on oil too much as of late. Could be available soon. Now I apologize once again that this live session isn't really live. Um, uh, we did everything last week. We had you know some issues. I think on Tuesday, but the rest of the week we were good. Today we had, you know, we were smooth for the first 10 minutes, but then it went bonkers. I did a speed test um, at 150 Mbps. I don't know what the reason is. I don't know if it's everyone working from home in my area that's 
putting a strain on the network that's not really um, showing in terms of speed but whatever it is I'll try to figure it out over the weekend uh, but this is just the nature of the beast of the current pandemic so I think I got everyone's pair recommendations out of the way except for bit BTC after I do BTC I'll give you guys a 50% coupon code to join these live sessions um, and to get 50% off your first month okay so BTC we haven't looked at it in a while it's actually not our chart, uh, BTC Coinbase. But yeah, it really hasn't done much, for being honest. Um, and it's actually doing our initial idea. So if you guys remember the time that it broke 6,000, um, we wanted it to break 3,900 for it to continue going to 3,000. Um, but we, we showed a scenario where this thing could make a deep retrace back to this trend line, reject it, and then go down. Because um, if you look at the, the monthly time from the long-term play here, it does make sense. Right, this is a, a simple downtrend trend line we drew, um, you know, dating back to, to 2017. And every time we come above, you know, we've always stayed below. Despite the many rallies we make to, to 13,000, every time these wicks always close below this line, right? Below this trend line, every single time. Um, obviously, when this pandemic first started we did get a closure above but then this thing just snapped back down below so I do think it's gonna make a retrace back to here before heading lower um, the weekly looks pretty good for that retrace but what's key is getting a rejection in and around this um, 8,000 area so this 8,000 levels will be very important for BTC if it doesn't you know reject off 8,000 and it goes above I do see it making a rally back to 10,000 and then maybe even 13,000. Um, but obviously, within price action, you know, standards, it's still a short, um, as in long term. But obviously, if you want to scalp it, go ahead and buy it to 8,000. That's fine too. Goodness, that's a sneeze. Okay, um, so I'm gonna give the 50% off coupon code and I'll give you a quick rundown of what this includes. So the code is actually first 50 and that is a zero, not the uh, letter O, it's a zero, all capitals. And what you're going to do is you're going to head over to forexlens.com. Oops, and once you, once you get on there, you're going to go to Forex Trading Room. Now, you're going to have two options, okay? So if you want to get full access, what this means is you get the live sessions Monday through Friday. Five signal providers including me so trade alerts around the clock so you always have a trade to enter and full access to our discord so full access to the, the VIP lounge on um, the free-to-play lounge on uh, the signals you know the stock market session everything you get full access you can even message me throughout the day um, with trading related questions I'll be more than happy to help so you're gonna get that for a very low 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 price of $48.58 so you click get full access Fill out this form, then click next. There'll be a section where it says add a promo code. You're gonna add first 50 to get the trading room for $48.50. That is a that is a steal. You know, that's how much you spend at the bar for a night of drinking. That's how much you spend on the lunch tab. Think about it, guys. It's not a lot of money. Just it's even it's less than 50 bucks, and it's for the entirety of a month. Most members make back the fee their first few days uh, or even week, depending on account size. But the value is unmatched. So make sure you take advantage. If you're still on the fence about joining, and I mean, you know, after what we've done for the past seven months, you know, continuous success. But if you're still on the fence, you can click sign up for a free membership and join our Monday and Friday sessions. And then head over to our Discord because um, we are giving full access until March 31st. You can give it a look, give it a check uh, this weekend, and then decide for yourself on Monday. If you want to see more specific signal results for me and the other providers, it's all on our website. When you go to Forex Signals, click Past Results, and you'll see my trading performance for 2020, 2019. I really do this. And then obviously, Intrend, Vanity, our other providers, they're all there for you guys to see. So um, go ahead and give it a look. But I hope I see some new faces on Monday's session. And hopefully it's live. So I'll get, I'll get the technical things fixed, and um, we'll meet again on Monday. So... Hope you guys have a great weekend. Practice the social distancing. Spend those profits at home. You know, order stuff on Amazon. You know, get your tissue paper there. Um, your your wipes. Make sure you um, 
cough into your sleeves, all of that good stuff. And uh, just take some time to find a new hobby. Um, work on your trading skills. That's a major thing. With all this downtime, this is the chance to put in that work. Now you have no excuses. Now you don't have, you know, oh, I got to pick up the kids from daycare or I, I have to go, you know, see so-and-so. We're all at home. We all have computers. It's time to put in that work. And uh, I'll be there to help you guys each step of the way. So I'm RP4X. I'm logging off. Peace and have a great weekend.